Welcome back, everybody, to the Daily Racing Show here at Race Plaza Media. My name is Milan. My name is Pia. And today we're going to take a look at the top five, six of the <laughs> uh, Women's Circuit Racing World Championship. Exactly. They were racing this past weekend again, two races and Estoril in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And it was, an, again, an insane weekend of racing. I mean, we've made a video about it, trying to highlight why you need to watch it. Unfortunately, it was taken down. We got our first copyright <laughs> strike on the channel. Um, I mean, we did edit it and repost it, so yeah. it has shorter clips of it. But I mean, it's just, it's such an incredibly fun racing league to follow. The mm. racing is incredible. There's so mm. much battling on the track and also the whole time. Like it's yes. non-stop. Yes, the races are shorter. It's only 20 minutes, which is also great. You don't have to commit too much time to the races. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's get into the highlights for this weekend. And it's also saying like the majority of races are really exciting. Yes. And they're literally battling until the last corner. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the MotoGP season this year. Yeah. It's very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there was like one race that was not exciting. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. You know, if you have like, what is it, like 20 races and one is not that good. For MotoGP. For the women, we only have six rounds, 12 races in total. Yeah. However, they're free. You can watch them on YouTube, mm -hmm. so you don't even have to worry about any subscription service or anything. You just mm -hmm. turn on YouTube wherever you are, and you can watch the races. Yeah. MotoGP is, I think, 24 this season, but it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, okay so number one. Yes. Um, so number one would uh, be in race one, mm -hmm. um, right before the warm-up lab, Maria Herrera, who is currently also battling for the championship, mm -hmm. uh, waved down before the start of the uh, warm-up lab. So essentially, as a driver, you can give a signal and then they abort the start. And so she had technical difficulties with her bike, so she had to go into the pits and then she had to start all the way on the back of the grid. And she originally started in... Second. In second. Yeah, which was also, I mean, she is, like you've been saying, she is contending for the championship. So for her to have to wave off, mm -hmm. starting from the back of the track, and it is 20 plus riders on the track. So there's a lot of places to make up. And mm -hmm. she was not leading the championship at the moment. Yes, but do you know who doesn't care? Who doesn't care? Maria Herrera. Oh, she sure does not she care. She does not care. <laughs> because at She's the like, it end, ain't gonna stop me. At the end of lap one, she was in the top six. Isn't that great? I mean, even just the start, she was passing so many people. I mean, the commentators kept saying she has the speed, but keep in mind, they're all on the same bike. They're, it's, they're yeah, all it's, on the same bike. All they have, on the same bike. I mean, you have to be fair. Obviously, there is a big difference uh, between like um, skill levels and experience levels, and experience levels mm -hmm. from like the back of the grid to the front of the grid because it's also a world championship so you have people from all over the world there so you have a lot of times we have an all Spanish podium because we've also been riding in a lot of European tracks. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming a lot of the dra uh, racers have access or have probably raced there more. Mm -hmm. However, it is still insane. Like her start, she was she immediately jumped half the field. Yes. And then she was like, I don't care. I'm just going to cut through yeah. this. And then at the end of lap one, she was in sixth place and that is absolutely amazing and um, you know once again we wish we could show you guys the footage because it was it was so it was so mind-boggling for everyone um but we'll link the full race yeah. here in the video so you have it easier to mm -hmm. take a peek at it mm -hmm. but don't click on it before we finish our highlights <laughs> yes. so you know what to look out for yes exactly <laughs> but then so she um first lap she's in the top six which is insane mm -hmm. and then she just continues from there like obviously that's mm -hmm. not yeah. the end for she maria <laughs> cutting down cutting down um then in with how many lap with 10 laps to go so mm -hmm. i think they do 12 so two laps into the race she's already in the top three yeah so maria was on a mission yeah nobody was gonna stop her mm -hmm. and yeah i mean we, we're not gonna get into the podium results quite yet yeah but we'll we'll get there a little bit later in the video but that i mean this is an incredible first mm -hmm. highlight this of is the honestly, race this is some mark marquez stuff I because know. he did that what is it two races ago mm -hmm. he started in what like in the back rows and then he just jumped in the start 15 place or like 10 places yeah. i think he did that during the sprint race mm -hmm. i mean very, very impressive. As Maria Herrera is definitely a rider to look out for, especially if she joins other 
uh, championships. Yeah, exactly. If she continues to join other championships. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so moving on to highlight number two. We're mm -hmm. talking about Tyla Ralph this time. She was... She had an amazing success the previous weekend where she landed her very first podium mm -hmm. on race number two in Cremona in Italy. And then so this weekend I was excited for her to maybe do justice well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tough. Like you you were saying, we usually have uh, a Spanish lockout on the podium. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while we have, we have Roberta mm -hmm. Ponziani on the podium, the Italian mm -hmm. rider. And then, of course, Tyler Ralph joined the podium as well. But then this time in race one, she was able to very briefly take the lead yes, of she the, led race. the race exactly yes. which was so exciting mm -hmm. to see she led it um with 11 laps to go she was able to take the lead mm -hmm. unfortunately anna carrasco took it back quite quickly from her but i still think it's such an accomplishment Absolutely. to be able to do it especially considering if we we've been watching her this entire season now and she's been improving she's been um scoring points she's been in contention not for the lead of the championship but for some of the higher positions which is like really top five mm -hmm. exactly so that was really really nice uh, unfortunately she did crash out in both of the races mm -hmm. um the first race we will get to why she maybe crashed out or why it didn't hurt her quite as much mm -hmm. um in in our next highlight but unfortunately in the second race she also crashed out with just a couple laps to go and you could see from her reaction how frustrated she was she was mm -hmm. like stomping and uh jumping on the gravel just mm -hmm. to like show her frustration because she was doing so well she was yeah. scoring really Really great points these last couple of races and she was in contention for some of the higher overall rider championship mm -hmm. points however nonetheless i think she did excellent i mean it was great to see her in the top yeah and i think it's also to to point out it's like i've never seen a moto gp race where no one didn't where no one dropped the bike or didn't crash out oh it's, yeah it's a very common thing because mm -hmm. obviously you're racing two wheels uh, around a circuit and it's pretty intense especially mm -hmm. sometimes if you see those riders how they're like shaking or sliding around yeah. it's very impressive how many of them are able to stay up on yeah the bike. how they can control the bike you can see yeah. them like really it, yeah but it does happen uh, all the time especially in moto gp or like on motorcycle racing it's it's just a thing yes um so however moving on to our third highlight yes. which is actually rain this is for the first time this season mm -hmm. that we encountered rain mm -hmm. um it was really interesting because like you saw the track and the commentators were like because you could see also that it was quite overcast yes um and then the commentators were like oh you know it looked the weather looks bad but you know we should have just uh, a dry race shouldn't be an issue yeah they and said then, there was no forecast of rain at all no yeah. forecast at all and then you and then all of a sudden at some point during the race <laughs> It, it switched to a camera and then there was like a drop on it. Mm -hmm. And then I was already like, mm -mm, this doesn't look so good. And then you look at the track uh -huh. and then it doesn't look so good. Yes. And so this was in race one. And then uh, we're going into, you're fin we're finishing up a lap. Uh, five is when the rain started. Or with so five, with laps, five to go. laps to go. Mm -hmm. And then going into the fourth uh, or final four. What is that? It's the last four laps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, and then that's actually also in race one where we talked about Maria making this huge jump. She actually takes the lead of the race there. And then um, because Anna Carrasco um, underestimated, I think, the track conditions, mm -hmm. she makes uh, uh, and she takes the first corner wide. Maria takes the lead. Mm -hmm. And then the, fla uh, the race gets red flagged. Oh, it was so incredible because also leading up to that moment, we had several riders a little bit further in the pack crash out, like back to back. It was like, bam, 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 bam. Yes, they all ended up kind of, I think, um, I think everyone was really surprised by the rain and how fast the track conditions um, changed. This mm -hmm. is also where Tyler Ralph going into the first right-hand corner mm -hmm. um, of the last four... <laughs> Yes. And how is this so difficult to say? Well, it's I don't know why they always on they World WCR they do the countdown. They don't tell you which lap you're on, but they do they, the they countdown. They do that in MotoGP too. Well, but in MotoGP they show the countdown, and then on the bottom they also show you lap yeah, twelve of twenty-four or something. Yeah, but anyway, so it's, it's I can't my brain can't handle it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so 
because Tyler Ralph, so the way they do it, I guess, in the uh, Women's Circuit Racing World Championship, I had to read it off because it's such a ridiculous name. Um, <laughs> World WCR. Yeah, World WCR. The reason, um, so the way they're doing it, they're essentially taking it based on the last sector time. Whoever was in front there or whoever in whatever position you were, this is how they're considered the end of the race. Mm -hmm. Or this is what they consider the final. So that means even though Maria was in the front when it was red flagged, she, because she passed a, a finish line in second place, um, she then finished the race in second place and Anna Carrasco ended up winning the race. Which leads us to point number four, the podium for race one. <laughs> yes, but what I was going to say, because Taylor Ralph actually finished, the, um, mm -hmm. f f went past the finish line and she was in fifth place. Even though she crashed out, she was considered fifth at the end of the race. Yes, correct, correct. Um, but it's a huge bummer for Maria. Mm -hmm. I'm uncertain why the rule is not whoever is in first place or why they don't take the you know positions at the yes. time of the red flag mm -hmm. instead of the last sector, which, yeah, I don't understand. Because a full sector is quite a distance. Like, a lot can change. And, I mean, we see it every weekend with the women, but also in a lot of other races where within a big sector, mm -hmm. so much can happen. <clears throat> Sorry. And, and, then, and then because two... Two thirds of the race have already been completed. Um, they were, weren't going to come back, yes. so the race was finished at that point. Which is, um, it's a huge bummer for Maria. Mm -hmm. I'm going into now our uh, fourth highlight officially, officially number four. Yeah. So we have um, Anna Carrasco um, clinching her win again. Mm -hmm. We have Maria, and then really, really exciting for the very first time, no, the second yeah, time. No, she was on the podium. On the podium, you. we have mm -hmm. Beatrice Nela. Yes. And she just seems like the nicest person. She's this, she seems like the sweetest person. Yeah. She's always so, so excited because, of course, like, why wouldn't she be excited to be on the podium for a world championship? Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, it was definitely um, a big, there was a lot of confusion. Yeah for who's going to be on the podium like Anna of course she was like oh yeah I won the race Maria was like well I think I won the race um so you could also tell in the post-race interview Maria wasn't um the happiest she was being very professional mm -hmm. about it and she still thought of course she had an amazing first race I mean she, she started did. from the back she ended up coming in second she even took the lead technically mm -hmm. but yeah it's definitely a bummer and also it just it does hurt Maria in the overall um, rider championship because she and Anna are the two that are competing. Anna or Maria was leading at the beginning of the season, but then she crashed out last weekend in Cremona, which took away yeah. so many points. To be fair, she was crashed into, so she couldn't yes. have not done anything. Yeah. And that, like, you immediately lose so many points that Anna jumped in the championship mm -hmm. where Maria was leading for the majority of the championship. She was yeah. leading it. And then that crash, her getting taken out, mm -hmm. it just hurts the championship so much. And then getting, quote unquote, screwed again in the next race back. First of all, you're like, your bike doesn't work. And you're like, what yeah. is going on? Which is also the first time that we had that this championship mm -hmm. that there was a technical or mechanical difficulty mm -hmm. during the start yes um so very very unfortunate yes and we only have one more race to go or one more race weekend to go but before we get into that let's talk about highlight number five which is race two i mean race two was still incredibly exciting there was so much beautiful battling happening specifically with the top four so we had Ana Carrasco, Maria Herrera, Sarah Sanchez and Beatriz Neyla they were competing constantly in the front eventually Roberta Ponciani ended up joining that pack as well because she was like I'm not missing out on this I got a podium last week and I'm ready for another podium mm -hmm. so she joined the pack and we I mean like like you said, we want to show you all the highlights. We unfortunately can. We don't want to get another copyright strike. You can't afford it. No. Um, but I mean, the racing was absolutely beautiful. There were moments when they went four wide on the finish straight, going into turn one. And there was there was not a moment where you could just like be on your phone or look away because you would have missed action within the top four, top five. Mm -hmm. And then we've been waiting for this. All season long. This has been hinted for a while now. This, yes. How, this finish. Because, I mean, she was so, so close. I mean, they've been so close this entire season. But Anna and Maria have been dominating um, the, the top step of the podium. Mm -hmm. But then this time we got into, we we went into the last corner, the mm -hmm. last lap. There was lap. a shootout race. And then, yeah. And then we had 
So we had uh, Ana Carrasco was in the front. Sarah Sanchez was right behind her in the slipstream. And then Maria Herrera. And then uh, Beatrice Nela in fourth. And then um, it was so cool to see Sarah Sanchez was trying to stay in the slipstream of Ana as, as long as possible. And Ana, of course, was trying to move away. So, so, so Sarah would lose the slipstream. But she got just enough time in the slipstream. She, she ended up getting out of it and got the win. She yeah. got her first win. Yeah. Oh. I, was, <laughs> I didn't know if you were gonna try a tie fight me. It wasn't. It was just uh, like, yeah, but I saw you, and I was, I was like, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't know we were high fiving now. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, but sure, we are high five for Sarah Sanchez yeah, absolutely. because I mean, she's been so close, yeah. so so many times, and then also last week, and she did crash out with Maria Herrera, mm-hmm. and that was a moment where she was also so close yet again. So it was, uh, it was just so nice to see. I was so excited for her. Yeah, very excited. And it's also the way it happened that I, I thought this might happen that because there was a lot of overtaking, a lot of positional change mm-hmm. on that finish line, mm-hmm. um, on that um, home stretch every time they came through because that slipstream, mm-hmm. especially on this track, if you got that final corner right, there's so much slip. So there was a lot of times you had, I think at some point you had someone going from third to first, yeah. from fourth to second or from fourth to first, just like sneaking through if you're able to just like slingshot around. Yeah, or even every time the whoever was leading into the finish line, or finish stretch Mm -hmm. they lost positions because of the slipstream Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it was it was uh, it was such a great week guys you gotta you gotta watch it you gotta watch it especially it's free you can watch it literally from anywhere on your phone yes uh, you know um you don't have to pay for it and it's really really good racing it's really really exciting so Mm -hmm. don't miss out on it yeah um so this upcoming weekend we have the final weekend of the season Mm -hmm. anything is still in the cards technically sarah sanchez who is in the third Mm -hmm. in the um driver's championship could still win it um then the big um fight of course will be between ana carrasco who currently has 208 points Mm -hmm. against maria herrera who has 190 Mm -hmm. and this is gonna sound really interesting um but i was for the most time of the season i was actually more of an ana carrasco guy Mm -hmm. because ana carrasco was quote-unquote the underdog yes because maria has so much experience and maria the first time i saw her i was like Oh my God. Yeah. She's I mean, insane. Anna has a lot of experience yes. as well, but Maria was just like almost dominating, but yeah. she was definitely always like, she just had a, a, like a foot in the door every single time, a and, little bit more of an advantage. And with Maria, it's also like you pass her and then she was like, I don't think so. And, then and she, she immediately strikes exactly. back. Exactly. She doesn't wait. She's like, I'm going to take this back immediately. No, I'm going to take this back immediately. Yeah. Um. So now, however, because of the circumstances that she went through, like she someone crashed into her which is really really unfortunate right Mm -hmm. um which is this is all racing right this just happens this happens in formula one this happens in moto gp this happens in nascar wherever you go right this is racing right but that happened and then her bike not working and then her not getting the win even though she was technically in front yeah kind of makes me i'm not saying i want maria to win i just want it to be a fight i want it to be a great final race weekend Mm -hmm. two races where it's really just about mm. them racing no no flag no red flag interferences or mm-hmm. weather i mean weather yes as long as the race is not stopped mm-hmm. because riding in rain is of course very different than on a on a dry track but i think also going into this weekend so we have the two races again in jerez in spain will definitely benefit our more our spanish riders it's a it's a home race for all of them mm-hmm. so i am expecting uh, another Spanish lockout of the podium. We will just see. Maybe not necessarily a lockout, but for sure um, a Spanish winner. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying oh. it will be a Spanish lockout. Mm-hmm. We'll have three Spanish riders on the podium. Um, it's just a, a question is who's going to be there mm-hmm. in which order. And this is the final race of the season mm-hmm. for the women. Of their first season, the inaugural season of the World WCR. This weekend, I mean, if you have not watched a single race yet, Watch these races, of course, but then also tune in this upcoming weekend for the final races. Yes, I'm very excited. So don't miss out on it. Um, As always, get in the comments. Let us know what you guys' thoughts were on the race or anything else. Mm -hmm. And as always, like and subscribe. And we'll be seeing you guys here on Thursday with everything that you can watch racing related this upcoming weekend. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.